Well, the good news is the first phase of the prototype is done. Bad news is it took me a bit longer to get there due to some of my own silly mistakes. Today I want to share those mistakes with you and show you the working station. One, wire gauge really does matter. Some of the keen eye views may note a subtle change to these wires over here. Originally I was using some of these jumper cables to connect the batteries to the selector, mainly so I could use the disconnectors to remove this uh, battery holder from the selector board. But what I hadn't checked was the gauge of these wires. That's important to us because the smaller the gauge, the higher the resistance, and this can have a big effect on any measurement we're trying to take. Let's take a closer look. As you can see, a single one of these with its connectors adds about 0.2 ohms, and there were multiple of these in series throughout the prototype, causing problems with measuring the voltage. This meant that the voltage reading that the Arduino was getting was always lower than expected, cutting the discharge off too soon. Two, the Arduino's ADC is a bit quirky. The Atmega328 doesn't have an A to D for each of the eight analog pins. It has one. It has eight inputs, all connected to a MUX or selector, which allows the ADC to be connected to this and then there also is some selecting logic which talks to this as well. So what that means is, is when the ADC is, needs to be used by the Arduino it first of all selects the pin so say pin 0 here and then the ADC can read from that pin. If you then need to read from say pin 4 it then changes the selection to pin four and then reads again from the ADC. Sounds fine, but there's a catch. There is a small amount of capacitance on the input to the ADC. So here, there is a small amount of capacitance around 14 picofarads. If you're reading a single input, say input zero here, there is no problem, the capacitance will create a small delay in the change in voltage. But if, like me, you're trying to read the voltage of multiple batteries at any one time, so I'm reading currently two for the two discharges, you need to leave a little time for the voltage to change to take effect when you switch between the batteries. It's pretty easy to do. The standard method is to use an analog read once to switch to the input that you want to read from, then wait a few fractions of a second and then read again. By that time the capacitance here will have had time to reflect the change in voltage between the two batteries and you should have a more accurate reading. 3. Arduino's ADC impedance. This one really got me for a while and I'm still trying to make sure I've got this 100% right. The Atmega328 specifies an impedance of no greater than 10k ohms, I believe partly due to the input capacitance of the ADC. This seems to manifest itself mainly as very erratic voltage readings from the ADC, meaning discharges were cut off at random times as voltages jumped about. What this means is some subtle changes to the circuit for the discharger. We started with a single op amp with the inverting input connected back via the MOSFET down to the load resistor here and up to our battery and back round to negative up there. This means that as we've seen before that with the voltage on the non-inverting set via a potentiometer up here, that if we hold this at one volt, the op amp will try to make sure that there's also one volt here, and that means that the resistance of the MOSFET will change to ensure that as the batteries 
uh, voltage changes over time we always have a constant one amp load across here the problem started to come with reading the voltage now we take the voltage from here and feed that into our Arduino and it was reading this voltage over time to check to see if we've discharged the battery to the right level. This doesn't actually work anymore because of issues I was having with the input impedance, or I believe so. So for the time being, I've taken out the Arduino from this part here now and introduced a voltage follower, which is another op amp with the inverting connected back to its output and then just the non-inverting connected here so that the voltage on the output of the op amp is the same as the voltage on the input buffering between the battery here and creating a high impedance on this side which then can feed back into the Arduino over here which really helped reduce the erratic behavior of the readings coming from those cells. So here's the working prototype. We've got six cells in. Uh, first cell has already finished at 102 milliamp hours, which is my dud cell. I knew that one was going to do that. Um, I have in there now cell one, which is currently discharging, currently at 1,236 milliamp hours. And cell two is currently charging. Uh, cell three is finished and finished at 1,555 milliamp hours. Uh, cell four is still charging as well and cell five is waiting. Cell five is waiting because it shares the discharger with cell one. So as soon as cell one has finished, it will then start to discharge that cell. As soon as cells two and four have finished charging, two or four, depending on which finishes first, will go into a discharge. So the code is now available online, see the link in the video description, and I will be following up with more improvements soon. The next improvements will be the measuring of internal resistance and measuring the temperature of the batteries during charge and discharge to cut those cycles short depending on how hot those batteries get. Lastly, and most importantly, big shout out to Nerdville. If you have not come from Nerdville, then I wholeheartedly recommend that you check out his channel. He's doing some awesome stuff with 18650 cells. Uh, the link is in the video description below. And if you have come from there, thank you very much for subscribing. And I hope that these videos are of interest. So if you haven't seen, Nerdville has also been working on a charge and discharge station. And it made sense for us to team up, to collaborate, so over the next few months the improvements to this will be to change this into something that will work with Nerville's project as well and hopefully we can build something great together. But we can't do this alone so if you've got ideas, suggestions, comments please leave them below and on his channel on his videos as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.